Okay, we're going to get started, so I ask everybody in the other room, shut the door, or um, come out. <laughs> um, I just want to welcome you all to uh, another burn. We're so excited. Um, I just welcome you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. just want to make an announcement that we have a cord on the side. Um, that we ask people to watch out for when you walk in the aisles. We are recording tonight, so we ask people not to go up the center aisle tonight, but you can feel free to roam all over on the sides, in the back, um, just because we want to um, get a good recording and, and put it online if we can. And So don't go up the center aisles, just go up and down the sides, and there's two bathrooms, one to the right, one around the corner, and if you absolutely need to, we have some out in the hallway we can give you keys to as well. Um, thank you, Father. We just encourage you all to just begin to go in the spirit right now. Lord, we just open our spirits to you. We just surrender to you, Amen. Lord. All we long for is to be with you. And Lord, we're so hungry. And so, Lord, we just open ourselves. We say, Jesus, come. Come, oh, Lord. We want to be face to face with you tonight. We want to look into your face and look into ours, Lord. We want to hear your heart beating. And we want to be with your heart, Lord. Let your heart just beat in this place. Let it resonate in this city, Father that your heart will just go into the very atmosphere and change us, Lord, for your glory. So we just encourage y'all to enjoy um, yourself tonight. Feel free to worship along the sides. And we'll be in. <coughs> Um, we're getting started. I'm going to introduce you to some awesome people. So, you know Brandon Jackal from Rochester. He's our um, awesome burn director here. And I want to point to these two beautiful people coming up the aisle. Not for marriage, but... <laughs> this is uh, Steve and Andrea, or Andrea, how would you like to pronounce I have to make sure because you just don't know. Andrea Hart, they're from Texas, but they may, um, let's just call them a mobile burn. <laughs> um, she's all, they're also burn directors, so you've got three sets of burn directors here. And uh, we're real excited, real excited. I want each one of us to be able to talk before we start this time. I want you guys to hear a little bit about the burn um, firsthand from those of us who are doing it, not just me. So, actually, Brandon with the big eyes right now. What's going on? Brandon, come on up and give us a little talk while we sit on Drew. Well, it's always good to be here. I have a lot of respect for Susan. Patrick here? No, he went to California yesterday. Oh, he flew out to California yesterday. But um, no, the last time I was here with you guys, there was just such a sweet presence that was here. And uh, it's just pretty incredible what you have cultivated as a community and as a family. And uh, so to be able to join with you in worship is just a real honor and a real treat. So, you know, thank you for, for having us. And um, yeah, the, uh, the burn is a, um, a global prayer movement that has vision to see the tabernacle of David erected across the earth. And um, Israel experienced some of its greatest breakthrough as a nation when David, you know, pitched a tent and for 33 years invited the nation to come and worship the Lord. And what's so incredible about the tabernacle of David is that the people of God pretty much defied Levitical law and was able to enter into the holy place and um, 
It kind of gives us a picture. Like, if, 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 if King David and the people that lived in the Old Covenant tapped into New Covenant realities before Christ and his cross, it almost tells me, like, can we enter into the promises of the New Age um, by creating a, a, an atmosphere and environment of praise and worship? And um, I believe that we can. And that we are. And we're going from glory to glory. And, and God is calling his bride to transcend and just to go higher. And it really is just an endless pursuit with no ceiling. And worship and prayer is just such a powerful vehicle that kind of is a catalyst to encounter the Lord. And um, yeah, it's an honor to be here. Go ahead, Andrew. Oh, turn your mic on, babe. Oh, yes, yeah, Steve, that'd be good. Well, I just want to say what an honor it is to be here with you all tonight. Um, it was shortly before we started the burn in New Braunfels, Texas, which is just outside of San Antonio, that we went to see a guy named Benny Hinn, uh, which I'm sure some of you have heard about. We didn't know that much about Benny Hinn. Uh, church that we were in partnership with uh, invited us to go, so we went. He was in San Antonio. Um, and uh, I learned that Benny Hinn is not really my particular style. Uh, I honor what he does and his ministry and that kind of thing. Um, but while I was there, the Lord said, just be still and listen. And he said there are four seasons in his life and he was entering the fourth one. He said, I don't know if that means I'm going to die after this or if that just means I won't be in ministry anymore, but I know the Lord said there's four seasons earning the fourth one. And uh, and it hit me all at once. The Holy Spirit just started speaking to me about the age that the church was entering into and that for a season, there have been big names, Benny Hinn, Billy Graham, Louis Palau, and they have drawn thousands, tens of thousands, sometimes close to a hundred thousand people to a crusade. And, and the Lord said it is not going to be the big household names that are drawing people anymore. It is going to be the no-name people that, that come in and prepare a place for my presence. And my presence will fill stadiums. And we are in that age where it is it is these, pardon the expression, but it is these ragtag band of people like us that come together and just prepare a place for the Lord of hosts. And by that preparing, the presence comes like, like in the tabernacle of David, the weight of glory draws people like a magnet. Because that is what people are looking for. They are looking for his presence. And they're looking for it in all kinds of other things, but it's only him that satisfies. So when he comes to the earth, when he sets his foot in a place, then he draws people to himself. And so that is really our goal, is to restore the earth and restore the bride by preparing a place for the Lord. So we are just we're honored to be here with you tonight as we as we do that together. So bless you. Okay, those of you who were here last time, remember that we got to weave in with the Amaras. So we will be doing that again with our team. We don't believe in, uh, I mean, honestly, we, we want it to be a living body of Christ. We want everybody to come and bring something. So we'll come and bring our worship and an atmosphere that is intimate with the Lord. And then it's your job to respond to that atmosphere. It's your job to respond to the heart of the Father and what He's saying to you. And um, if my eyes are closed, you can just gently pat my arm or whatever. It's okay. But we want to flow together because we don't want to miss out on anything that God has for us. I don't want you to keep back what he has for me that's coming through you. And I will make a promise that I won't hold back on what he has for you through me. How's that? We have a deal on that? Um, Brian and I were, 2008, we were, the Lord said, go and do praise in the park. So we went all over Oklahoma in the parks. We invited everybody. 
that we could in each and every town. We got permits to do outside worship, and we went and set up all our equipment, full equipment. You can easily and clearly hear us for at least a mile. We have really good outdoor equipment, and um, nobody came except for one town. And I'm saying, Lord, you told me to do this. Why are we out here doing this? And I kept hearing him say, audience of one. I'm your audience. I'm your audience. Later on, I understood that we were also setting stakes in those territories and that we were shifting the atmosphere with the sound. But I, I just thought, well, Lord, are we the only ones that just want to come out here where there's no walls and just be before you and worship? Are we the only ones? And um, in 2009, we learned that there was something called the burn, which was almost exactly like what they had a name for it that was different, but it was still the same thing. And it was 2010 before we got a mailer that said, come to our burn an hour away. And that's when we hooked up with the burn is in 2010. So we've been here for three, uh, almost three and a half years now. It's at the end of 2009, 2010. I would love to see worship transformed. Yes. To where it goes from, you have a worship leader that comes in and takes you in. To you have a worship leader that just goes in and everybody else's heart is to do the same. Somebody that, that yes, has a gift of leadership, but it's not because you need to be pulled in or you don't have access. It's just that they're ready to go and so are you and they just have to have giftings and the musical talent kind of part of it, but not because I'm coming in here to take you in to something you already have ownership of. And the Word of God says, come boldly to the throne of grace. I believe in that, and I think that's tangible. I don't think it's just an idea where, oh, I, Lord, I just want to attach it. But I'm, I see it as fully the throne room of God, high and exalted, where His train is filling the temple. Well, we're right there in that place, embracing who He is, and just saying, Daddy, I just came to pour out to show you how much I love you. Times where you just hanging on his every word, listening for his song, and then singing it back to him. Audience of one worship. Just him. Not where I'm not entertaining, not being entertained, where I'm not using you to fill my void of acceptance, but where we just are, who we were created to be, and we operate in that. And that's, what the, that's why we go 24 hours. That's why you have musicians and bands and all of that who will come in and do a two-hour set at 3 to 5 a.m. when people either are asleep or they're just not there because it's not about pleasing man. It's about doing what you were created to do, worshiping the King of Kings. So um, if you haven't been here, it may go a little different. We're not going to do a whole lot of, um, I mean, we could have done the standard Sunday morning worship, but um, I just wasn't, I couldn't find that in me tonight at all. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to sing a whole bunch of new songs. There'll be some song we sing together, but mostly this is each of our meeting time with Abba Father. And that's all we're going to do. This is what we're going to burn. We're just going to meet with Daddy God. We're going to listen and cling to Him. Do like His Word says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. We'll draw near to you, Lord. We will seek your face. And Lord, your promise is that you will draw near to us. When we draw near to you, that's your condition, that you will draw near to us. So we're going to meet you in that place, Father. Lord, we're just going to lift up our hearts and our hands. We're going to lay ourselves down. We're going to honor you. So I invite you to stand, sit. Uh, I know there's a pillow back there already. Whatever you need to do, you get in that place with God. Tonight, your prayer closet is 
filled with multiple people, but it's the same intimacy. ministers to me, but I can tell you the first time that the first time that I recognized I could go in anywhere at any time, I was in the middle of a church service, it was the song service and I could not focus um, and it was spiritual noise, it wasn't like everybody else was noisy, I could not focus the, the atmosphere was not still and I cried out to God, God how do I worship, I want to worship you I need all this stuff to be quiet to go away and my eyes were closed, and I saw him high and exhausted. I saw him on his throne. And it affected me so badly, it caused me to fear, and I opened my eyes to escape it. But even when I opened my eyes, there he was. And I knew he was waiting on me to ask, do you want real worship and spirit and truth? Then come right here. There's access. And so it's our choice to go to that place. I see you high and exalted. And your glory is in this place.
spend a long time asleep. We worship me in their presence to awaken them. We worship me without a mask, without religiousness. Will you just sing to me so that I can awaken them? And I just began to sing, see Kat singing. And as she sang, I began to see the graves open one by one. Because the people don't know their dad. We don't know we're dead. We don't know that we're locked in a, in a rut. We're in the same old thing every day. We don't know how to get out of it. But the Lord says, come away. Come out of those things. It's time to live. It's time to live in His presence. It's time to recapture those dreams and desires deep in your heart. Let them out. God wants to fulfill those desires, those dreams that you have inside. He doesn't want you to let your dreams die. He doesn't want the gravestone to have the final say. He said he's rolling your stone away today. And he's saying, come out, come away. Open your heart tonight and let him lift you into life. Because as you do, you're going to find all the chains come off of you, all the grave clothes, all the hopelessness and fear. And you're going to find a deep, deep love that you never knew was near. Yes, Lord. He has a love for you. And he has a joy and a liberty. And he's here to awaken you. He's here to awaken this city. And the gravestones are going to open. And the dead are going to rise. And they're going to see Jesus with new eyes. Because he's here to resurrect his people this year. And even as Susan was speaking, I just saw this unleashing of living water like boom. but I saw the person like laying down but I saw the living water just splashing down but the edges of that living water were pure glory they absolutely were and I knew that was us wash over me
a praying and an interceding church. So tonight, with one voice and one heart, let us lift up our voice. Let us intercede together as one church according to your heart desire. And let it flow. Let it overflow. Bringing us right to serve Father, but eager and willing spirits to respond to your desire alone.
Ephesians 5, 14. Therefore he says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine, and will make the day dawn upon you, and give you light.
when you have done so much, when you are so wonderful, how can we not proclaim your love? How can we remain silent when you gave your only son as ransom to redeem us even we were still yet in our sin? He came laid down his life for us.
Choo!